Hello everybody, Glidingman here. So today we're back in Blender and I'm going to be giving you a little tip here on how to do some keyframe animation. So, uh, this is the default scene uh, that opens when you open up Blender. And you can see we've got a cube here, this is a lamp, and this is our camera. Um, this is in the Blender render engine. Um, I would note this is not the realistic render. Uh, Cycles is the realistic render. Um, but that's perfectly fine for our purposes here. Um, so I'm going to just expand this side panel just a little bit so that we have uh, easier access to these controls. And right off the bat, we're just going to render the active scene and see what we've got. So you can see we cannot see our lamp up here, uh, but we can see its effects on the object itself. And this is the side that has shadow. We'll press escape to exit out of that. Okay, so we want to do keyframe animation. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's quite simple. So let's just say we want our cube here. All we have to do is press I, and then you're gonna see this huge list of options here. Um, depending on what uh, you're looking for, like what types of things that you're animating, um, you may wish to have location, rotation, and scale keyframe. Or you can just do location, you can just do rotation, and a bunch of these different combinations. In this case, I'm just going to go with black rot scale. And you're going to see that this ter text turned orange, and uh, if we just arrow over for a moment, you can see that there's this little uh, yellow line there uh, at our first keyframe. So, this is our timeline, and you can see we've got that we start at keyframe 1, or frame 1, or whatever, and then we end at 250. And this is our current. We can click this little button here to play our animation that we've keyframed. Uh, you can see it's running a little bit slower than usual. Uh, that's just due to me recording. Um, however, what we can do is we can do uh, AV Sync, which should bring it somewhat closer and play it back in somewhat better real time. Um, okay, so uh, what we're going to be t turning on as well is snap during transform, which if I just left click and drag on this red handle, you can see is snapping to the grid. Uh, that's just for convenience. So we're going to go in about 30 frames, um, which we're going to make a one second period. And we need to adjust the frame rate so that that's a one second period. So now, uh, we're just going to drag it, one, two, three, four, you, can see, you could have seen in the bottom left here that it was also showing change, and then we're going to press I again, and whatever option you had selected previously, uh, you're going to see is also popping up right there underneath your cursor, so that you can quickly hit I and then left click. And you're going to see that there's another yellow bar right there as well, so we've got a yellow bar there and there. And if we just use the arrow keys to go back and forth, you can see it smoothly animates between the two positions. You're going to see that that also has uh, basically ramping up. So if I play that, um, it kind of just starts off slow and then speeds up. You can adjust that um, in the graph editor. And we're just going to do that, and we're going to pop over to that by clicking on that little corner there uh, that was there, and uh, then we're going to swap over to the graph editor. You, I'm going to just do this. I'm going to press T while my mouse is on this screen to hide this little sidebar so that we have a little bit more room. And here you're going to see that animation. So this red line here is where you can see it's traveling from 0 to negative 4. And as we step through it, you can see the uh, green line here is showing this is how far you are through it. So right about here-ish is where it's traveling the fastest. Um, there are, of course, different modes. If you press V while your mouse is over here, uh, you can see that there's uh, a bunch of different modes. Typically, what you're looking for is either automatic or vector. 
and if we pop over to vector, you're going to see it just travels in a straight line now, which means it will move the same distance no matter what. However, it may look a bit sudden because it is not animated smoothly uh, like the automatic does. Play that. It's a little bit smoother. But that's just a little uh, getting started with that. I'm going to drag this little corner, and then you're going to see this big arrow uh, as I drag this way, and then I'm going to let go, and that just pops that away. I'm going to bring back the toolbar by pressing T. And so now we've got the start of our animation, but that's really only like location. What we can also do, uh, which we'll do at frame 60, is we can adjust the scale. So we can do S to press, uh, S to scale, by pressing that on the keyboard. And in the bottom left, you're going to see uh, the scale values changing. You can see that's going on the X, Y, and Z axes. And I want to make this twice as big. And the reason why it was snapped into the values is because we've got that little uh, magnet, which is the snap during transform. So now it's twice as big. I'm going to press I, lock rod scale. I'm going to pop over to frame 90. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do multiple things at once. We're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that it's over here, which basically means it'll move from here to there at a 45 degree angle. And then uh, at the same time, we're going to scale it. And because I know I scaled it up by two, I can scale it down by half. And we're also going to rotate by pressing R. And then uh, we're going to rotate along the Y axis uh, by 45 degrees. So now we can press I, lock rot scale. And if we just pop back here, we can see what it does. I'm just going to arrow through it. So it shrinks and it rotates and it moves. So you can combine a bunch of those uh, different movements all at once. Now, to make this loop, we're going to actually uh, do a couple different things. First, we're going to go to uh, frame 120, and then we're going to bring back that graph editor. So we're going to click on that little bottom corner arrow thing. We're going to close out the toolbar there. <laughs> that can happen to you sometimes. Uh, if you're trying to move them, you have to move up here. I'm just going to close that, and then we're going to pop back over to the graph editor. Now, to make this a looping animation, um, what we want it to do is we don't want to have this keyframe at frame 1. We want it at frame 0, so that when uh, this runs from frames 1 to 120, uh, 120 can then be replaced by 0 by being exactly the same. It'll just make it go smoother. So we're going to press A to deselect all of our keyframes here. And we're going to do B for a box select. And we're going to select everything that was like at frame 0 or 1 or whatever. And then we're going to just uh, shift D to duplicate it. You can see here I'm grabbing all of those. And uh, it's kind of looking funky uh, as I'm moving it around. And then I want to press X to lock it to the X axis so that I can't move it up or down. And then I'm going to match up that yellow with the 120. Let me just zoom in on this by scroll wheeling. And then uh, what I'm going to do back here, accidentally pressed N, is I'm going to grab this with box select again. I'm going to press G to grab them. You can see I've got the, those two grabbed. Actually, that's more than two. Um, as you can see, the red and the blue are splitting off from the bottom one. I'm going to press X, so that I'm moving along the X axis. And then I'm going to press negative 1, which will move it back exactly one step. So now, if we uh, play this, you're going to see it goes there, expands. And so that will be a completely looping pattern. If we had moved... If we had left this um, over one frame, uh, then it would have a moment where it kind of stutters and doesn't look quite right. So uh, that looks 
pretty good. I believe we can close that off now. And let's make sure our camera can see everything. So let's go to the beginning and we'll hit the play button, uh, which by the way, the shortcut is Alt key and then A, uh, which is kind of useful. Okay, so it looks like we need to move our camera over, uh, probably on the Y axis. So let's do a G to grab and then Y. And then uh, you're gonna see this actually popped out of the snap to transform. Uh, what we can do is we can just press escape and then uh, left click that again. So grab Y and then probably there should work. So let's give that a play. Okay, maybe a bit too far. That and then we're gonna grab on the Z as well. Um, another thing that you can do is you can increase the field of view, um, which you can go here. Currently it's at like 49 degrees-ish. If we bump that up to 60, we can see a little bit more. Um, so let's give that a play and see how that looks. It was over, scales up, there. Okay, so grab Z that way. Scales up, goes to there, back to there. Okay, perfect. So now we're probably going to want to render our scene here. Because, I mean, it's just a cube moving around. It's not like this is a final product or anything. We need to be able to uh, render this and use it in videos or whatever. So, uh, what we need to do is we need to configure our animation settings. By default, these should be pretty good. Um, this is uh, good. These resolution settings are good for testing, um, where you don't need as high of a resolution, um, but this is 1080p, and then it's scaled down by 50%. Um, if you're doing a uh, full video, you probably want that at 100% of that resolution. And because I'm only doing this at 10, uh, 720p, I'm gonna bump down the resolution to 720. So it's at 720p, 100% uh, scale. Um, now an important thing that may vary per computer, but this should be relatively standard um, if you have uh, QuickTime installed, is you can see down here, by default, it will output as PNGs. I typically like to have a complete movie file. Um, so what I do is I do MPEGs. I make sure to set them as RGB MPEGs. And then you can see all of your settings disappeared from there, but it's now in the presets here. And then I typically go with the format of QuickTime and then H.264, which is kind of this long chain, but uh, that's kind of what works for me. Uh, depending on the type of video, um, I leave the bitrate at either 6,000 or about 2,000 to cut down on file size. Um, so that's going to be your main file size thing there. And then for audio, I typically do AAC. Um, most of these settings should be there on Windows, uh, especially if you have QuickTime installed, uh, which I believe is pretty common. Um, but then here is just your output directory. That will, of course, vary per computer. Um, I'll configure mine and then uh, I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so I've got my uh, output configured where I want it. Um, I'm just putting it on the desktop for now, and you also give it a file name in the menu system there. So now, we want to render our animation. So, all we have to do is click this little animation button, and I'll probably just speed up through this because as I'm recording at the same time while it's going to be rendering, that'll probably also take it a little bit to do. So, um, I'll catch you when it's done uh, rendering after we click animation. Um, and by the way, if this is too big, just use the mouse to scroll out or use the number pad and one, by pressing one, it goes to one one scale, two, it's half, four, it's quarter, um, which can be useful. Seeing large screens that are bigger than your actual blender window. So, uh, I'll catch you guys in a moment. And 
there we go. So now it's completely rendered our animation. It's dumped the movie file on the uh, desktop. And uh, one way that you can also preview it in Blender is you can go render and then you can click play rendered animation and that'll open up uh, the Blender player. And let me just drag that over here so that you can see it. So uh, this is the animation that it rendered and uh, this is the built-in player. However, you can't really pull the movie file from that. Um, I will have the uh, full version of it inserted in now. So that's the proper rendered version, not uh, this potentially laggy uh, recording playback mechanism. Uh, so hopefully uh, that looked okay. So uh, we're just going to press escape to exit out of that. And you may have noticed that that didn't really have any like natural blurring, as you may kind of call it, um, where, you know, if you wave your hand in front of your face, uh, it kind of blurs. Um, what you would have to do here is you'd have to click Sample Motion Blur, click that little uh, checkbox, and then for a for it to look better and better, you would increase the samples, which of course basically means that it keeps re-rendering the scene at slightly different time frames. Um, so basically, it's uh, messing with uh, decimal values of the frame uh, to make it look smooth. Um, that would just really increase render time, and so I didn't uh, do that. But now you know how to uh, keyframe uh, some simple objects, and I hope you find that useful, and I'll see you later. Bye! <laughs>